Is David Miranda on the hot seat this year? I know I did a video on this just about the whole Big 12 as a whole, but I'm going to go over this again. No, he's not. First of all, you got to take very little away from that 2020 year because he was hired in January. He did not have much time with the team. In fact, that their spring game got canceled, as we all know, because of the pandemic. I mean, and we try, we tried like we had co like we tried to, to play a non-conference game against Louisiana Tech, but that got canceled because of Louisiana Tech had COVID. Then we tried to play against Houston, and then we had COVID issues. So we opened our regular season game on September 26th against Kansas. So yeah, and we had a lot of game. We had COVID issues throughout the year as well. I mean, we lost to West Virginia by one possession. We lost to Iowa State by one possession. A really good Iowa State team at the time, but has definitely take fallen off a cliff ever since that 2020 year. We lost by one point against Texas Tech on the road. And that's the same thing. I mean, and I mean, that's the truth. And we did have like a few close losses in there. And we did beat Kansas State unexpectedly, 32-31. <laughs> and we only lost to Oklahoma at Oklahoma, 27-24. And Texas, 27-20, I mean, 27-16 and TCU at home. 33 to 23, but we were down 33, 30 to nothing. So that made that game a lot closer than it really was. So one, two, three, one possession losses. So a two and seven season could have easily been a four and five or five and four season. And Iowa State got fortunate in that game that Craig Squirrel Williams, the former Baylor running back, got hurt because he was killing. Iowa State. You can't deny that Iowa State fans. You just can't. I mean, you can't even tackle the guy. Of course, he learned his mistakes. First of all, I mean, first of all, like, you know, you got to take a very little away from that season. And they decided, and that was like a year zero to me, in my opinion. And we were not even sure that we were going to even have a football season back then, let alone when are we really going to start our games here? And then we had to fight. We fired Larry Fedora and the OC. It didn't work out. Same thing goes for Jorge Munoz. Those two butted heads, and that's why they got fired. Ops line coach got, was gone as well because Larry Fedora was gone. So thus, we hired Jeff Grimes from BYU to Baylor, and then and then, of course, we got Aaron Mateos as well as a new wide receivers coach. At the time, he was only here for one year, and that was Chancey Stuckey. He left to Notre Dame right after the season. And, of course, we, lo we lost Joey McGuire to Texas Tech as a head football coach. And some of the volunteer assistant guys went to Texas Tech with them. I mean... After that magical 2021 year, 12 and 2 Big 12 champion, Big 12 title game championship, literally inches away from losing that game, literally, and we won the Sugar Bowl, and that was the best year in program history. We had a high going on, but then last year occurred and we fell off a cliff. But not to not miss a bowl game, it's just we made got to six and six. But we were six and three, and then we lost. Proceeded to lose four straight games, and there had to be some changes after last year. There had to be. First of all, Ron Roberts got fired. The defense took a step backwards. Even though some people were saying, "Why not the offensive coordinator?" The offensive numbers were not that bad. I mean, they were even better than the year before. I mean. It's the truth. Look at the stats. Compare the biggest drop off on the offense to the, to the defense, and the yeah, offense went improved. Improved. And of course, Gary Bohannon left, and we had 
to do right by him and Blake Shapin at the time because whoever was going to not be the starter deserved a chance to be going elsewhere. So maybe in hindsight they shouldn't have done that. But it does matter. They decided to do that anyway. And we lost a lot of skill position guys and leadership guys from that team. Not just on offense, but on defense as well. I mean, Jim Petrie. Terrell Bernard. That's, and we and we lost Ty Quan Thornton in that as well. So, and of course, we got a new, we had to replace a running backs coach because we know that Juice, Justin Juice Johnson went to Texas Tech, which he had more titles than he would have had at Baylor. So let's be clear. And we also fired a safeties coach from last year and I don't recall that guy I don't want to know remember that guy's name because that was how bad the defense uh, the safeties were really were and the special teams even took a step backwards so the safety slash special teams coach got fired or let go and we had to get rid of the Ron Roberts and we have decided to bring in Matthew Pallage back to Baylor. And I know thus we had to hire a outside linebackers coach for this year, which I'm going to go over that on just a list of them. AJ Stewart as a running backs coach. We got Matthew Pallage back. We uh, Dallas Baker was hired a year ago. Kev, uh, Kevin Curtis is still here. Yeah, we had to hire him as well. I mean, uh, because the former cornerbacks coach left to be somewhere else after the season to become a DC, which he can't blame. So really. Yeah, Christian Robinson is the name. Yeah, he just got hired as an outside linebackers coach. By the way. And the current staff as of right now is David Randall head coach. AJ Stewart as running backs coach is slash assistant head coach. The OC and tight ends coach, Jeff Grimes, the defensive coordinator and uh, safeties coach, Matthew Pallage, Dallas Baker as a wide receivers coach, slash assistant coach, Sean Bell at the quarterbacks coach. Slash so assistant coach. Another assistant coach is Caleb Collins at Alexander Linebackers. And Christian Robinson, by the way, is inside linebackers, to make that clear. And Evan Mateo stayed on as the offensive line coach. Dennis Johnson as defensive line coach. So that's. And we do have a. Have a special teams guy, but he's not going to be on the sidelines necessarily. So, oh, Tyler Hancock, I believe that's the name, but he's going to be more like a prat in practice and game won't be in game games, but you know. And I want to go also go over like some other associate AD for player personnel. Kiva Soro Comir, associate AD for football relations, David Wetzel, Jeff Gregus as assistant AD as football for football operations, Aaron Hunt, assistant AD of scouting, Larry McDonald, assistant AD for football recruiting, Taylor Hand Halsey. Director of on-campus recruiting, Zach Sheets. Team, director of team development, and the list goes on and on and on. If you want to check all those out, go to the Bell website. For this. Because it's a long list. And it would take a long time. But he's learned every mistake in the book. I mean, last year he even admitted... He should have kicked off some players. Well, we know that 
Roman Randolph was suspended. Suspended from the team. I mean, like, from practices. Due, due, due to a DUI. Yeah. He's not messing around. And he's learned that lesson because he's now, and he was already out with an injury anyway, but now he's back. Apparently. So hopefully he learns his lesson for sure because he's probably next mistake, he's on the way out. And obviously, like I said a week ago, we kicked off a player from the team. It was a coach's decision. And actually, I didn't say that at the time. Like, I wasn't sure if it was or wasn't. But this was definitely a coach's decision. I mean... I don't know exactly what happened behind the scenes, but I just know it's a coach's decision, and he was kicked off the team for an off-the-field issue. And he's not going to mess around this year. I mean, he's not going to let what happened last year happen again this year. Off the field. And it was some culture issues off the field uh, uh, last year as well. Not just some egos from the coaches, and, the, and but from the players as well. So... Yeah, and he didn't take as many transfers as Pat, like 2022 than he should have, given our guys we lost in the skill positions on offense, and we lost some loose guys on defense as well. I know we still had Dylan Doyle and Siaki Ika, but that's besides the point. When you lose a lot of secondary guys, it hurts. I mean... And I know we practically lost almost everybody now at that position from last year, I believe, but I'm not positive. And I'm going to go into about each position for the Baylor football team at a later date. But the deal is, he brought in more transfers, both coming into the spring and even now before the summer camp and fall practices than all of his, his time at Baylor. I mean, I'm going to look at the exact number on this, but it's at least 13 guys. I believe so. I mean, Johnny Carter, Trevor My Eye, Sawyer Robertson, Byron Vaughns, Jake Roberts, Clark Barrington, Dominic Richardson, Campbell Barrington, Keetron Jackson, Jack Stone, Mike Smith, Isaiah Dunson. RJ Martinez even so yeah and so in total one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve actually twelve thirteen yeah thir that's thirteen guys and we might add some more by the way maybe because because we do have a few spots, it looks like. Potentially. Potentially a few spots, but we have to wait and see. And especially now that we kicked off a player from last week. So, and expect a Juco or a transfer, I mean, somebody in the transfer portal to come in to play this year. And I know there's a notable player that we tried to go after last year in Latrell McCutcheon from Oklahoma. He was at USC last year. But prior to that, he was at Oklahoma and he entered the transfer portal. I'm not sure if Baylor would take him. Because he would require a wa a waiver. But if you take him, you're going to have to dr and If you can't play him, you got to stash him away for next year. But that's besides the point. He's learned every mistake that he's taken. And I, I know this year's schedule is a lot easier than last year. A lot easier. First of all, you only have four road games, and you eight, and you got eight home games. You can't deny that, that part. 
You just can't. And he's not afraid to fight, pull the trigger and fire somebody. He's done that time and time again. You can't deny it. I mean, and you get to play three of the four newcomers. Yes, you don't play BYU this year, unlike the last two years, but it makes sense. Maybe we play BYU next year, but we don't know. I mean... And including, right before the bye week, we have five home games. Five. The only road game we have before the bye week is UCF on the road. That is a dangerous game. And I would say the Cincinnati game is more dangerous in, because of, in terms of a trap. Because that's a team that you expect to beat. But you might fall to them anyway. But UCF is a totally different story. UCF is going to be good this year. John Rice Plumley could definitely run the ball. It's just up and on with his passing. I mean, with his arm. I mean, in the passing game, yes, they could run it. I know they can. Trust me. I mean, and I know that if Blake Shapin doesn't improve, they will pull him. I'm sure they will this time. And I know some people are really complaining about Blake Shapin. on him not he should not be even starting or why do we pick up a commit from a five, four star guy they don't have a clue first of all story and why did we bring in those two transfers that they came from right beat them first of all RJ Martinez is coming from FCS to division one FBS that's a big jump and second Sawyer Robertson was an offensive system at Mississippi State under the late Mike Leach. That was air raid. That's a totally different system. And the same thing goes in high school for him. So he needs more time than just one semester. Though the upside's with him, of course. It's just, and I mean, we only, the only road games Baylor has this year, if you don't know the schedule already, like UCF, Cincinnati, Kansas State and, and TCU. I mean, TCU and Kansas State. But you get, the only thing I didn't like about the schedule for this year is the back-to-back -back road games. I mean, TCU, I mean, Kansas State and TCU. I mean, I wish they would have moved one of those road games up to not make it back to, I didn't back-to-back -back road games, but after that, it's so favorable. You get the tougher teams at home like Utah, Texas, Texas Tech. Texas Tech's going to be good, but I'm not sure they're going to be as good as the hype really is. I mean, because they think they could very well go to the Big 12 title game, I know. But, I don't know. And the thing about them is, Tyler Show has been injury prone all, all his career. I mean, not all his career, but at Texas Tech at least. You can't deny that fact. Yes, he's undefeated as a starter at Texas Tech. But, the best availability, I mean, the best, uh, you know that saying about, you got to be available to play in the games and keep yourself healthy. And he's not done that in his career. Yes, he's an NFL prospect, but that's when healthy. I mean, you get, I'm not worried about, I wish they should be a little bit better, but you still should beat them. It's Houston, the same thing goes for Houston. and West Virginia, I don't expect as much, but I know Neil Brown is on the hot seat over there. And he could very well be fired at this at that point of the season. He could be, or definitely is on the way out. For all I know, and they lost a lot of guys to the transfer portal. Yes, they added some, but I don't know. And Kansas State is a similar team to me to Baylor of last year. And what? Look, they lose a lot of skilled guys. Yeah, yes, they have some replacements, and they return the offensive line, but they also lost some guys in skill positions. And that's why I kind of say. 
they're similar to Baylor in last year in a way. They think they have an upgrade at quarterback based amount of skill guys. And we all know that TCU is going to take a step. They should take a step backwards, potentially. Because look at all those guys they lost. It's a ton. And we're, we'll we have to, we'll know early on in the season if they're for real, for real from last year. Or are they just kind of like me you know, like going to be that eight win mo at most. I mean, like, or four and eight. I mean, that's the thing. Maybe nine three, maybe, but I don't know because they lose a lot of guys and the schedule's tougher for them this year than last year. And they lost. They they and they actually and like I said, they lost a bunch of production. I mean, it's almost thirty nine percent of the production in terms of touchdowns. And they won a lot of close games last year. A lot of 10 point wins or or less I mean that's the truth you can't deny it they were flirting with disaster a bunch I mean I mean look we get yeah that's the thing that's the thing about this year I of course the biggest thing is Dave Rand has to make a bowl game this year because if he doesn't, he's probably going to be on the hot seat for next year. He probably will will be. But I don't see that happening. They're going to get to a bowl at least. But I would prefer seven or eight wins. I mean, seven wins at the minimal. Just to improve from last year's schedule. I mean, from last year without the bowl game. That's the thing. That's all I want this year. I know some fans want more like eight wins. And eight wins is possible with this schedule. I mean, you have eight home games. And the schedule only fa favors you just this year because next year, you got to go Utah on the road. And, yes, Utah might be losing a bunch, but playing in that altitude is no joke. I mean, and we don't know about the conference schedule for next year. We honestly don't know. But... I know in conference wise we play Air Force at home as well. I mean, and they're gonna be dealing with that like ten players less deal because of that punit I mean that not really punishment, but you know what I'm saying, like the NCA investigation punit and NCA punishment for like having players on their campus during COVID nineteen death period. Yeah, Tarleton State is the other one, so. And we know what happened last time against Air Force. We got beat. I'm sure Dave Miranda doesn't want to lose to them again. And yes, Utah's on the road next year. We don't know about the conference slate. Obviously. Because we don't know. Is it going to be two or three protected rivals? Then rotate? I mean, and even then, the Big 12 might add something. I'm not going to say, according to my sources, this is going to happen for sure. I'm not going to guarantee anything on this. Because what if the Big 12 adds Colorado and Arizona? Just an example. to come to the Big 12 next year. That's going to alter the schedule stuff. You can't deny that. You really can't deny that part. I mean, because then you, you would have to rotate your rivals more. I mean, it's going to affect the sched conference slate. Like I said, and like, is it going to be two or three protected rivals or it's going to be like pod system? So, yeah. And I don't know about San Diego State coming to Big 12 either. But you know what I'm saying on this conference realignment stuff? I don't know if the Big 12 is going to add anybody for sure because I'm not going to. But or say for sure they're coming or anybody's coming I mean that's the truth on all this so I apologize for this long video on this but there's uncertainty I mean like it's definitely a no I mean uncertainty for the conference slate for next year and Dave Rain is not on the hot seat the only way he gets on it is to not make a bowl game and I don't see that happening and I think we all want higher better 
than last year for sure. So get at least seven or eight wins. I think he's fine. But obviously, I think the ceiling is nine and three or ten and two. I don't know about eleven and one. I'm not willing to go that far for this year. Because there, I just think Baylor loses at least two conference games, no matter what. But maybe if they go ten and two, they lose to Utah than somebody else. At least one conference game they're gonna lose. And can't and thing is we don't play Oklahoma, we don't play Oklahoma State, we don't even play Kansas. And I think Kansas is gonna be better this year than last year a little bit. So we get to avoid those teams, and that's helpful. And we avoid playing BYU. Not like I'm scared of BYU because they lose a lot. But you know what I'm saying in terms of familiarity. So really, it's a lot favorable of a schedule this year than last year. And in fact, it's the easiest schedule Baylor's ever had in the entire football history. I mean, eight home games. That's a record. You only have four road games. So... They're going to make it at least to a bowl this year. And they're going to get up to seven wins at the minimum. I would just say just to make make it better than last year already. Now, obviously, if we get more, that's a bonus. I mean, I take ten wins. And I think it's possible because I do think the defense will be better this year. I do think the quarterback position will be better than last year. And, our, and I know we lose a lot, some guys on the offensive line, a lot of them. But I think it's going to be just fine. It's just got to work on that pass protection. Because the run game, it looks like, is going to be, of course, the strength. And we got solid tight ends, solid running backs. So, anyways, if you like this content, like and subscribe. And see you guys later. Uh, on the road to five subscribers, we're on the road to it. Let's go.